Hi everyone, my name is Abdullah and welcome to you all in this conference presentation. Uh, as you can see here, this conference presentation uh, will be under the title of uh, because they are different, they are unqualified and worthless. And the main question to be discussed uh, through this conference is uh, why Australian community uh, underestimates people from different uh, race and ethnicity. So uh, before we go in depth uh, with our topic, uh, I want you all guys to imagine that you have graduated from Griffith University with an outstanding uh, in your major and when you're applying to the job, uh, the employer says to your face that we don't want you because your hair is black or because you are different from us because your ethnicity is different uh, or they don't even call you for the inter interview because your name and your CVs indicates that uh, you are from different origins. For example, you have an Arabic name or an Asian name. So this is what happens to many of uh, people in Australia whom are from different uh, ethnic origins. Uh, so as I am an international student uh, who has a different ethnicity from Australians, uh, I will share with you my experience uh, with oppression uh, in Australia. Uh, in the last year, I have applied to more than 20 jobs in Australia and I only got one uh, reply. Uh, I guess the others 19 who haven't even uh, called or sent an email back, they saw my name and which indicates that I'm from different uh, ethnicity. However, uh, the other one who replied me, uh, it was a restaurant and uh, the manager was uh, an Australian manager and he offered me, would you he said, would you like to work uh, with us and we will give you a $10 per hour, <laughs> only $10 per hour. And uh, as you know, the minimum wages in, in Australia is $20 per hour. So why it's very important uh, to discuss and know about oppression against people uh, whom are from different uh, ethnic origins. Uh, first of all, it's very important uh, that you know uh, oppression is very complex and it has many different forms. And also it can show up uh, everywhere. It can show up at school, it can show up at university and even at your uh, uh, workplace. Uh, also, it's important to know about oppression because uh, there's a high probability that everyone uh, can face uh, oppression. Uh, also, oppression is very dangerous. Uh, it has many negative uh, effects. It affects our uh, social life. Also, it affects on our uh, mental and physical uh, health. Uh, also, uh, it's necessary to know about oppression in this conference to protect yourself first and others from oppression. So what do we exactly mean by oppression? Uh, oppression means the exercise of authority and power uh, in a burdensome manner. So when a person who has uh, power or authority exploit his position uh, to exert a tyrannical influence over others. Uh, also, uh, oppression and privilege are very connected. Uh, so for uh, each uh, oppressed group, uh, there is a corresponding uh, privileged uh, group. So because they are very connected, we cannot uh, eliminate oppression uh, itself without eliminating uh, privilege. When we talk about oppression, it's very important to mention intersectionality. And basically intersectionality means uh, the process of separating the intersections between forms of uh, oppression. Uh, basically intersectionality defines why uh, people are being uh, oppressed. Uh, is it because their race uh, or their gender or for example their uh, different uh, ethnicity? Uh, also, uh, all different forms of uh, oppression uh, involves uh, similar dynamics of uh, subordination and uh, domination. Uh, 
So in this slide, I will provide you with some facts regarding uh, oppression in Australia and uh, how uh, people who have uh, different uh, ethnic origins are suffering from oppression in Australia. Uh, firstly, in many Australian organizations, employers tend to ask uh, the applicants questions regarding their ethnicity and background. Uh, also, uh, in many uh, selection process uh, in Australia, uh, employers uh, tend to avoid applicants who have uh, foreign or unfamiliar names. For example, uh, uh, if when they say when they see your CV uh, and your name is unfamiliar or uh, not English name, uh, they tend to avoid uh, this kind of uh, employee because they know. Uh, that they are not Australian and they are from different uh, ethnic origins. Mm. As well as uh, some job advertisements in Australia uh, include direct and indirect discrimination and oppression against people uh, from different uh, ethnic origins. Uh, this is a very recent study that shows uh, how it's very serious uh, the oppression against uh, people from different uh, ethnic uh, origins in Australia uh, and uh, the study was conducted this year uh, according to Australian National Survey that 76% uh, of the survey respondents whom are from different uh, ethnic origins have experienced oppression and discrimination in Australia. Uh, also 18% of these people uh, said that they had experience oppression because of their skin color and ethnicity. In addition, this is another survey uh, that shows how common is uh, the oppression in Australia against people uh, from different uh, ethnic origins. Uh, according to SPS uh, website that 54% uh, of survey respondents who are from different uh, ethnic uh, origins uh, exposed uh, to oppression at their workplace. Mm. Uh, also, 41% uh, of the uh, survey respondents look at migrants and minor minority groups with an inferior look and they perceive them uh, as negative burden on Australia. And now we have come uh, to the most important uh, part of this conference presentation and actually the fatigue of this uh, conference, uh, which is uh, how can you deal uh, in such a situation if you are being uh, oppressed or you saw someone uh, in oppression situation, how can you help yourself and support uh, others? Uh, as a professional in human and social services, uh, I highly recommend and the most important thing uh, is self-compassion, which basically means to treat yourself with kindness and support as you are supporting your friend. So imagine that your friend in that situation, how would you support uh, him? And try to do this to yourself. Be kind to yourself and supportive for yourself. Also, um, it means, uh, self-compassion means uh, uh, to you to know what you need uh, in that situation uh, do you need to speak about it uh, do you need to ask for help and to do what you need do it for yourself uh, these are four main steps for an effective self-compassion self to support you uh, when you face a such situation uh, first thing uh, the kindness and uh, as I have explained, to be kind uh, to yourself and don't uh, judge yourself with the harsh uh, judgments. Uh, the second one uh, is common humanity, which basically means uh, not to isolate yourself. Your experience can be to anyone else. So uh, be familiar with it and accept it as a part uh, of uh, other experiences that anyone can face. Uh, the third one is uh, mindfulness, which pairs basically to understand your pain and to uh, be aware that uh, 
this situation is painful and accept it and not to uh, running away uh, from it uh, lastly uh, after you have uh, in such situation you have to think what is now to do what is the best thing to do for now and for the future my second recommendation for you as a professional in social and human services uh, is an allyship which mainly focus on how to support uh, and help others who are in a situation of oppression or any kind of uh, discrimination uh, and allyship basically is the work of allies and an ally is the person uh, who want to fight for uh, equity uh, of a marginalized uh, group of people that they are not a part uh, of and uh, the allyship uh, is a lifelong uh, process uh, of building relations uh, based on trust uh, and uh, consistency and accountability with a marginalized group uh, of people these are some quick uh, points that help you to be a good ally to support uh, others and uh, the first step is uh, to educate yourself and uh, to know uh, that uh, oppression is a very complex and can appear everywhere and to be conscious uh, of people around you if they are being oppressed or not uh, the second thing is to recognize your privilege uh, usually your privilege gives you uh, power and voice and by recognizing this voice uh, and this uh, privilege uh, you can use them uh, to support others and uh, to show up others uh, rights mm -hmm. uh, also you have to listen well to be good at, to be a good ally you have to listen very well because uh, as you are not a part uh, on that situation you have to listen from people whom are exposure to that experience to understand them and to know then how to support them uh, lastly uh, create change talk to people around you and try to convert them at the end of this conference presentation don't forget to protect yourself uh, from any forms of oppression by self-compassion and be nice and supportive to yourself also always be a good ally uh, for others and support uh, others thank you so much for listening and i hope you have enjoyed this conference